At the Environment Agency, there are many initiatives underway to ensure that we can reach our target of net zero carbon by 2030. A series of projects form part of the Net Zero Carbon programme and are at different stages. From R&D to pilots, all are focusing on carbon reduction across the flood and coastal erosion risk management strategy. The work streams taken forward relate to the following business areas. As of 2020, construction contributes to 54% of our emissions. We work with the suppliers to select the lowest carbon option, avoiding the generation of carbon whenever possible. When carbon emissions cannot be avoided, we are then working on a decarbonisation plan of our value chain to support EA ambitions. This, in combination with a change in the investment choices, contributes to the roadmap to net zero carbon. We are working on the decarbonisation plans for our MICA carbon hotspots. As part of our plans, we investigate if pumping is needed or if it can be avoided with natural flood management. When needed, we look to optimise our pumping station's performance, as pumping accounts for one-third of our direct carbon emissions. We are exploring how to use the very latest technologies. One of these areas is exploring and understanding how to take our assets off the grid through the use of renewable energy. We are trialling the generation and storage of energy from renewable sources through a micro-hydro generation pilot. This technology could help us taking off-grid small and medium assets. The cost and carbon tool brings together current tools such as ERIC, our whole life carbon planning tool, and our project cost tool. The cost and carbon tool provides an estimation system which will enable the Environment Agency to analyse and benchmark its cost and carbon data. This will evidence and enable a reduction in carbon intensity per pound spent in the programme. The minimum technical requirements for civil engineering and MICA assets have been updated to incorporate best practices and a list of innovative, lower carbon solutions for delivery teams. These will enable and support the realisation of operational and capital carbon reductions. As part of our funding allocation, we are investigating the applicability of items such as carbon pricing, including the cost of carbon within business cases. We are introducing carbon outcome measures and trialling carbon budgets for the provision of providing area-based targets. Innovation trials are underway to develop and mature our minimum technical requirements, with specifications for low and ultra-low carbon concrete and modern methods of construction such as 3D printing. Carbon literacy training in conjunction with our sustainable business team is helping to upskill our staff and build our employee capability. We are studying the benefits of becoming an accredited PAS 2080 organisation and how this can benefit our organisation and improve our collaboration with our value chain. We are exploring carbon offsetting options to determine the best methods currently available, such as woodland, peat and kelp. We are also considering the legalities of what we are allowed to do in terms of offset, so our corporate carbon offsetting strategy and policy can be developed further. By pursuing and progressing these work packages and projects, we can measure our maturing journey and better evidence where we are making the right low-carbon decisions, where our choices result in a reduction against our carbon use. This will enable us to calculate the residual carbon which needs to be offset through sequestration and other activities. These work streams, packages and projects will inform the second phase of the programme and help to develop the ongoing net zero carbon programme for infrastructure.